Hello and welcome back to our Bandit Lord challenge, and I'm actually still at Caravan Seth because... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hello there. Alright, oh, we have a bit of an issue. Alright, so I was actually going to go straight away and talk to the gang leader Moira because I actually took her task. Her task was to provide seven one-handed axes. She didn't care about the quality, so I basically went into the marketplace. I purchased the cheapest axes that I could to try and maximize the amount of profit that we're going to get and unfortunately we're now having this happen all right uh, we have permission let us pass oh <laughs> okay I have a bit I do have a bit of charm skill so okay here we go oh look at that it actually worked surprisingly enough and uh, now I'm at oh 48 percent no no unfortunate all right so um, yeah that's that's not going to work that was uh, that was actually really unfortunate, but it, it's okay. It's okay. Um, uh, you seem like a reasonable man. Ah, uh, four hundred and fifty. Okay, yeah, sure. There you go. The guards won't come after you anymore. So now, here's what's really funny about this. I was actually in the town, and I was ready to. I because I, I I purchased the weapons in the marketplace in the town itself. So I thought to myself, yeah, I don't have to go anywhere. I can just basically purchase all this stuff, and then we're great. You know, then we're golden. Then we can do whatever we want to do. But the problem comes when I was actually um, having some issues with my recording software because apparently the interaction between Bannerlord and my recording software causes some kind of weird CPU problem when you're in a town and the game is paused. Yeah, I know. It sounds really weird and yes, it is indeed very weird. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try and fix this. So I went away from the town for about five seconds and then we had to go back in, obviously, once the recording started. And so... <laughs> That is the reason why we even had that interaction. Hilarious, isn't it? Anyway, here's your cargo. Boom, there you go. And so we, we just gained 2,306. I spent 1,000 a a thousand gold on the one-handed axes, and then I spent another 400 to bribe the guards. So technically, we gained around 1,200, which is actually not entirely bad. But the main reason why I was doing that, of course, is for the relation with Moira. And we're going to be going in here and attempting to um, take over the clearing. So we're going to do that in just a second. I just want to make sure that we have a little bit more HP. And we're going to go to the clearing and not go to the other one this time. Because I went to the other one beforehand and actually attacked one, uh, some of Moira's own, own people. Which was uh, a great idea. Yes, that was absolutely wonderful, wasn't it? Okay, yeah, I seem to have gone the wrong way. That's wonderful too. Okay, uh, how, how do I actually get around here? Oh, here we go, here we go. Alright, uh, where is it? <laughs> what is this? What? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Who, who cares about this? Who cares about this particular piece of, of territory? This is a very strange place to really care about. Okay, well, whatever the case, I will try to murder him. There we go. We've actually got a pretty nice weapon right now. It seems pretty fast. And it um, seems like, yeah, look at that. It seems to be doing a much better job than we had before. Is this one of my crafted weapons, actually? <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that we have something different because I, uh, I'm i pretty sure that I didn't have anything like... No, no, no. I'm actually using a short sword. Look at that. It has 66 length in comparison to what I had before, which was, I think, around 100. So very significantly less in terms of its reach. But that could be a pretty decent thing to go for a pretty decent option for us anyway in this episode i'm going to try to upgrade our main base and that is obviously going to take a little bit of extra a little bit of extra money on our part and obviously that's not that's not particularly bad and um i actually find it quite refreshing that the forbury mod allows us to have weekly wages instead of daily wages i actually really like that because you know, that's how things used to happen in Warband, you know, all of your stuff, including your wages, your your rents, your tariffs, absolutely every single thing was done on a weekly basis in comparison to, you know, Bannerlord now doing it on a daily, on a daily basis. So pretty cool. I like it. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's uh, let's just attack them. This is going to be pretty easy. But the main thing that I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to try to uh, level up my throne weapons so getting as many headshots as possible is going to be pretty pretty important but obviously we don't have a huge amount of you know focus points in any of that stuff so generally not that uh not that many gains i'm gonna get here but i'm gonna try to get some oh that was unfortunate wasn't it okay yeah 
Uh, we're getting pretty unlucky, actually, with the amount of hits that I'm getting here. Nice, nice. Oh, oh, no. Can we, can we avoid it? Yes, yes, we can actually avoid. Very nice. Look at that. And that is it. Okay. Oh, wow. We actually, we actually lost someone. Can you believe it? We actually lost someone in that, even though we had a pretty overwhelming advantage, but thankfully they were just on, they were just knocked unconscious. That's not that big a deal. And we are going to get some oil for this, which is okay. We're going to get an upgrade for some of our companions as well. And uh, some people actually said to me, um, is my medic actually assigned as my surgeon? And yes, she is. She's been like that, I think, since episode two. Um, I, I did forget to actually assign her initially, but we remembered a little bit later on, and, and now she is indeed our surgeon for a couple of episodes now. So that's really nice. Otherwise, I'm just going to do a, a real quick scam here. There we go. And uh, yeah, now now look at look at Boss Gwenin. Boss Gwenin has nothing. She has absolutely nothing. So I'm very much hoping that she's going to be. Um, yeah, we already have a partnership in this town. Um, yeah, I'm very much hoping that she's going to have even less power now over time. And maybe uh, I don't even know whether we can even eliminate her at some point. It would be kind of nice if we could. There is a grand heist, possible gain of nine thousand. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, 1500. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. If we're going to get 9,000 and we have to pay 1500 for a little bit of extra security, I think that's kind of worth it, don't you? I think that's kind of worth it. Anyway, here we go. They are approaching. Let's just get my companions in on the action as well. I've, surprisingly enough, my companions can be pretty useful. And yeah, we're going to have this, this sort of situation happen again where the enemy is going to slowly approach us in a single, single file. And we're going to try and do some damage with our thrown weapons, at least initially, and then we'll see if we can get some skill. Maybe I'll get some headshots. Ooh, that was a neck shot. I only did 8 damage. Are you serious? 11 damage? Whoa, okay. H hello. This guy is literally a monster of epic proportions, because apparently I literally just hit this guy, how many times? 6 times in the face? And he's still alive. I don't even know how that happened, but okay. All right, I'm going to have to get out my actual weapon then, apparently, because this is this is just ridiculous that this guy literally just took thrown daggers in the face like candy. I don't even understand how that was possible, but thankfully we are able to run down the remaining forces. I, 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 that, that fellow must have had an amazing helmet, really. That's all I can say. But, uh, you know, all things considered, I think he should have probably died. Anyway, there we go. We gained 9,300. We've increased our relation with Moira by a significant amount, so much so that she now has 99 relation with us. Hopefully she's actually going to go to the other areas in the town and actually take those over because she only has one of them and it would be quite nice for her to have a couple of extras so that she can gain in power. And then we, as you know, as you know, being in an agreement with her are going to gain in power by proxy. So hopefully that's going to work. Anyway, let's have a look what we have here. Deal 10% more damage in simulations in snow and forest terrain. Might be useful. We're probably going to be doing that. Yep. Going to be doing that. Because I'm mostly in Batanian territory right now. Obviously, I'm going to be heading back to the forest bandit hideout as well. Bear in mind, I haven't forgotten about that. That is absolutely fine. We're going to go back there soon enough. And otherwise, we're just going to go into our main base here. All right. So, weekly upgrades. So, as far as I am aware... And this is what someone actually detailed in the comments. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, that actually makes a great deal of sense. So thank you very much for this. Because basically what, what it means is these little things right here, these, uh, these little um, dedications of weekly upgrades, that's going to allow me to upgrade my logistics, my comfort in these two places as well. And as a result, it's going to actually increase my overall income. And so taking a hit every now and again is actually not too bad. However, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to have a low criminal rating or uh, shall we say a low corruption level for two weeks. I think around two weeks is probably going to be good enough. And then I'm going to return here. We've just got to make sure that we return here in, in good time. Because if we don't return here in good time, we're going to have some big problems. Anyway... Uh, these two obviously don't really have anything to do with us right now. Uh, whoa, she's actually really powerful. Look at that, 370. Probably would have been a, a good idea to make an alliance with her instead of taking over the town, but 
this was my first one, so I guess I can kind of be forgiven for that a little bit. But anyway, let's just move on back to Pen Canock. There is a tournament going on here. I, I've had some bad luck with tournaments recently, haven't I? Hmm, yes, I have. Okay, so this fellow obviously has 37 relation with us. Would be nice if we could maybe do a little bit more with him. And yeah, almost there, almost there. So I'm going to do that in just a second, but I would like to do a tournament. A plumed nomad helmet. Not sure how really good that is. It's 32. It's all right. Let's hope that I'm actually going to be able to do something in this tournament here. And it reminds me that I really need to start specking into some of my combat skills a lot more often because it feels to me like I'm just getting outsped almost all the time in these kinds of situations where I'm actually up against a higher tier enemy. You know, it's going to be pretty important for us later down the line as well. So it might be worth it for me to just start specking into that here because I do have charm and roguery maxed out. So I shouldn't really need to worry too much about those anymore. There we go. Oh, we actually gained a level. Fantastic. Great. Okay, so that means that we do have a focus point to spend. Or at least we should have a, a, sp a focus point to spend. Uh, also, maybe an attribute point too. That would be kind of nice. Let's see whether that's indeed the case after this though, of course. Alright, so this is a complete free-for-all. I'm a bit worried. I'd like to use the tree, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. So I'm just going to be a bit aggressive. There we go. Nice little, nice little defense, and then, and then you know, retaliatory strikes. It could be kind of useful for us right there. And then hopefully I'm going to be able to... Oh, he's using my strategy. Look at him. He's using my strategy around the tree. That was hilarious. All right, there we go. He actually almost took me down as well. Can you imagine? If he'd actually hit me in the neck or something like that, he probably would have killed me in one hit. All right, I have to be really careful here. Oh, maybe I don't need to be careful. Ooh, that was real close. A Batanian scout doing all the work right there. Very nice indeed. Super worried about that, actually. Anyway, here we go. Okay, nice. Ooh. All right, yeah, there we go. And we do get a new helmet. I think this helmet is actually a lot better than what I'm wearing because from what I can tell, my helmet is looking pretty terrible. And um, suffice it to say, it would probably be a good idea for me to try and upgrade my my armor a little bit, wouldn't it? So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that if I can. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to upgrade my civilian gear because from my perspective, I feel like civilian gear is the place that we need the most upgrades. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to do this and I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to get in comparison to our throne weapons because as you can see, my throne weapons and as well as pretty much everything else are being replaced. So let's see what actually happens here if we do this. 47,000 it's going to cost me. Oh yeah, because I actually upgraded everyone. Okay, let me just reset that real fast. And let me just upgrade myself. That's going to cost me 21,000. All right, I think, that, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good actually. And this is a nice blade, as you can see. 71 damage, good swing speed, decent length, you know, all that wonderful stuff. So that's pretty nice. And otherwise, well... I don't think I can really afford anything more. So even if I wanted to upgrade this stuff, don't think that's really going to work. Let's just upgrade my helmet there like I did before. And I think we're I think we're doing pretty nicely right here. So 21,000. We've got a nice little bit of an upgrade there as well. So let me see. Is there anything else that I can do? Well, I could do the insurance scam. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the insurance scam. So I'm just going to do the last any thing. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Seven items of jewelry. Okay, I wouldn't try to sell them here. All right, sure. One of the merchants in the town comes to talk to you as you're preparing to depart. And there's Pelosaur. Hello, Mr. Pelosaur. Okay. Uh, I see you can take them. No, that is none of your business. That is none of your business, sir. Uh, my criminal rating has increased by 10. Well, that's not particularly good. All right, so yeah, I have now finished the task. And we have increased our relation with this fellow by a massive margin as well, hilariously enough. And um, that means that I can now make him an ally, which is going to be pretty awesome. So let me have a look. Uh, I need to... No shields and ranged weapons equipped. Well, I do have ranged weapons, so obviously it's not really going to work. But this is an absolutely amazing skill. If you're going to be following the same kind of character build that I had in the Duelist series, you're going to be having a wonderful time. An absolutely wonderful time. It's going to be so incredibly fun to be able to sprint around and do so much damage. So, yeah, what we're going to do is I'm going to take... 
Not that. I actually did not want to take that. Okay, never mind. Oh, well. Yeah, so we're just going to go for one-handed focus point. I need to actually go and um, change this now in the arena, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to leave it the way it is because the other thing just gives me 4% more damage. It really doesn't do that much. But yeah, don't don't make, don't don't talk about other perks and then take those perks. Let's just uh, yeah, let's just say that, right? Let's just say that. Anyway, let me have a quick look here. Uh, yeah, someone said that using throwing knives and then allowing the enemy to just use the throwing knives all up from range, and then you yourself switching to melee with the last throwing knife can actually be really really important or very useful. So I'm gonna try that strategy. And we're going to see how it works. Because the last time that I did this, the AI was just way too good. Okay, let's see. Oh, the AI is not looking particularly good this time around. Okay, uh, maybe I'm actually going to be able to do something here. A little bit of damage. Okay, in the chest. Can I get a little bit more than that though, please? Okay, uh, I mean, I, I'm not doing too badly, not doing too badly, and I'm also avoiding the damage, which is actually the most important thing. Nice. Yes, and there we go. Oh, we actually, <laughs> okay, we actually eliminated him. That is hilarious. I don't know whether you noticed as he uh, flopped over onto his front, but he actually had huge amounts of daggers embedded in his corpse. Oh my, okay. Well, yeah, unfortunately we can't see that right now. Anyway, there we go. Relation is important. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna actually become partners with him. And we're gonna say uh that we'd like to have a recommendation from him. And that's what we're gonna do. There we go. And uh, technically we can buy his tannery here, but I think we I think we've seen that uh, enterprises are not exactly amazing. So we're kind of just going to leave those alone for the moment. And I should also probably go to an a different location to uh, actually, uh, you know, offload these wonderful goods that he gave me in the, uh, what was it now, in the uh, stolen goods quest. All right, so yeah, Batania, my criminal rating has now increased. I did actually get uh, a pretty significant amount of cash from that. Ah, yes, now I'm having some problems here. Yes, I am wanted by the Batanians. Okay, so, call some lads to get me in. So, I'm actually just going to go straight on in here just because I want to fence the jewelry. I can sell it, at, oh, I can buy it at Caravan Seth for a small amount. Okay, yeah, we're just going to do that. That seems like a pretty decent profit, actually, all things considered. And, um, yeah, apart from that, what else do I want to do? Well, I should probably buy some, some weapons here for, for cheap, but I'm actually not going to do that right now because I'm going to head back to Dunglanis. And we're just going to lower our corruption level. As I said, I actually wanted to wait for two weeks, but I think my um, my criminal rating is a little bit too high for my liking right now, so I'd like to reduce that a little bit. So let's just put it back on high. We're going to have a bit of a hemorrhaging situation going on here, so we're going to have you know, lower profit than what we'd like, but there's not much I can do about that. I kind of just have to, you know, just going to have to deal with it for the moment. All right, so let me have a look-see here. Just going to take a couple of pieces of food just to make sure. And now we can actually go for additional smugglers if we want to as well. I think I will go for some additional smugglers. There we go. We'll just put one there. And as you can see, that's because of these weekly upgrades. So the more money I have, the more weekly upgrades I can get. And then the more money I can dedicate to increasing everything. It's actually pretty awesome. So it would be kind of cool if we could do that. Forest Bandits, as you can see right here. Bandit faction strength must be above 500. Each spotted hideout of that faction will grant plus 3% to your scheme network. So that's going to be extremely important as time goes on. So in other words, we need to try and help forest bandits as much as we can. So that is exactly what I'll try. I will try to do that. Uh, let me have a look. See here. Fencing stolen goods. No, she still uh, owns nothing. Neither of these people own anything. So that's that's perfectly acceptable. And I think I'm probably going to go back to the hideout here. We might want to just go ahead and do that. Also, someone mentioned that prisoners, and I'm, I'm talking about not bandit prisoners. So apparently other kinds of prisoners are going to provide so much more. Oh, no. What? Some, something actually happened right here. Okay, yeah. Any, anyway, I'm just going to... Um, finish my thought here uh, before we head back to Dunglanis. I'm not, not entirely sure what even happened here, but anyway, 
my thought was that, um, yeah, I received a comment that basically said, regular troops that you take prisoner, in other words, you know, members of caravans, I assume, um, you know, vassal, vassal enemies, you know, so on and so forth, those kinds of things, they can be, you know, dedicated, basically put into these forest banded hideouts or any hideouts that you want to work with. And they are then going to give you so much more strength. So I'm going to definitely try that out. Hopefully we'll be able to do something with that. I'm Ah, hello. Okay, so she took over the waterfront. Okay, okay. That's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. We're going to head on in there and see what we can do. All right, so where's the waterfront? There is the waterfront. Okay, so how do I actually get there from here? I guess I just have to... Oh, that, that is very easy. Well, that was a, a, just a straight line, wasn't it? All right, so there's the townsman just going to... Oh, a guard is watching me? Are you serious? Okay, I bet the guard's going to do nothing about me murdering these guys in, in, uh, in pure daylight, right? All right, well, let's just eliminate them. This is a wonderful sword, though. Look at that. That's a wonderful sword. Yeah, the guard is just like, oh, yeah, uh, that's just just some regular <laughs> just some regular things going on right there. Does, uh, doesn't concern me. Yeah, just some people murdering each other in the streets. Wonderful. Anyway, uh, th th and then all of a sudden with the pickpocketing, he's like, oh, no, someone stole eight gold. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, yeah, anyway, there we go. Uh, we're going to obviously eliminate... Uh, <laughs> her control of this area. This is going to be rather amusing, but yeah, we, we do have to come down pretty hard on them, uh, you know, in these cases, because we really just want to send a message. We want to make sure that they know we are not to be messed with, you know what I mean? So hopefully I'm going to be able to get a couple of headshots right here. Nice little headshot right there on the gang leader herself. And then hopefully, there we go. That is a nice little victory for us there. And obviously, I mean, we had 10 people. They only had, like, what, three or something? Oh, look at this. We've got some... Whoa, this is pretty nice. Jewelry, leather, velvet, all of that. Going to be really significant upgrades for us. Also, Dareem could definitely use some upgrades for his civilian gear. And so that's exactly what I'm going to give him. Going to give him some new stuff right there. Also, Yagada definitely could have used some too. And there you go. You took back the waterfront. And that is exactly what we wanted. Wonderful. Now, every single time you actually do this, uh, you do actually reduce the gang leader's power. I don't know whether you've noticed that, but for example, if I were to go over to Caravan Seth right now, and we were to have a look at the person that we're not allied with, so Boss Gwenine, you can see here that she actually has a power of 41. And she started with a power of, I think, 58 or something like that. And so she's gone down pretty pretty significantly. So uh, apart from that, she actually does own something right here. So it seems like I'm going to have to go in here and see what I can do about eliminating the uh, control of her uh, of, of the clearing for her. And um, hopefully we'll be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's this place again. Yes, I, I, this is what I'm talking about. Not entirely sure why anyone would want control of this area because it's basically just some greenery. It doesn't really do much. But who am I to say? You know, maybe they like the greenery. Okay, so this is going to be relatively simple for us to win. Unfortunately, Dareem is getting himself killed really easily, unfortunately. That was not not exactly in my plans. Ow. Yeah, I'm going to... Ooh, I actually survived. Okay, whew. That was a bit lucky there for a real quick second. Okay, so I'm just going to continue attacking here. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> okay, I was... <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. Not in a million years. I thought to myself, oh, there's a fence here. Uh, let me just walk right over it. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? All right, well, mm, yes, somewhat unfortunate, isn't it? Uh, yes, okay. So that's the thing. Moira really needs to get on top of these people, really needs to make sure that she doesn't get these kinds of things happening because they've installed themselves in a pretty significant manner. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to fight against so many enemies at once. Although, to be fair, I think I probably would have been able to do it if I just didn't walk over that fence and I actually had a little bit of extra space to be able to maneuver and everything. But, oh well, never mind. I think Pathfinder is probably what we're going to have here. Mm, yes, yes, Pathfinder is much better. And we can also do another, oh yes, another wonderful perk point in Charm. But this is actually kind of useless for us. 50% less influence cost to initiate kingdom decisions. That could be kind of useful. Um, or 30% less influence cost of voting for proposals made by other people. 
personally, this doesn't matter at all to me, so I'm probably just going to take Firebrand, because as I say, if I do join a faction, it is only going to be for one purpose, and that purpose is going to be for leveling leadership. That's it. Just for leveling leadership. Oh, betting fraud. Oh yeah, betting fraud. I remember doing that, actually. Mm. We're not really going to be taking over any of the Vlandian towns at the moment. I think we're mostly going to be concentrating our, you know, quote-unquote businesses in Batanian territory for the moment. But we are obviously going to be expanding as time goes on. I'm just not wanting to focus on Vlandia right now. So we're just going to go back to the Forest Bandit hideout real fast. And I'm just going to spend a little bit of money. And uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of smithing or something like that. But... Obviously, right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to buy some of this stuff. Only only 2,400 this time. I'm actually wondering whether I'm um, going to be getting the same amount. Probably not going to be getting that much. Okay, so give away some stuff. Uh, we have actually a lot of weapons right here that we could technically give away. Uh, should I? Should I actually give away all of this stuff? Yeah, why not? Let's give away all of it. How much are we going to get? A pretty good amount. 436 right there. That's pretty good. And then we can just leave. And the uh, we need to get them to 500, don't we? We need to get them to 500 or something like that. So it would probably be a good idea to do that. I'm going to do a bit of a scam here just to continue increasing our roguery and charm. I don't really know how much it really gives us because obviously scamming is pretty much the first thing that you can even do. So, you know, uh, <laughs> doing that... I mean, you can kind of do it at every single village if you want to as well, which is actually kind of cool. So I don't really know how much it's really going to give you in general. Like, for example, I have how much charm? 133 and I have 120 roguery. Let me see if I scam here. Am I actually going to gain any skill from it? Yeah, I did gain. I, yeah, I did gain some charm, but obviously it's not going to give you a point every single time because otherwise that would be way too strong. But um, yeah, it does give me a pretty good amount. So nothing too bad. Just going to buy a whole bunch here. Seems like lowest level items or, or weapons doesn't seem to really... Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if it really makes a difference that much. I think it's actually pretty decent just to, to, to just do whatever. And just as long as they have some stuff, as you can see, it did increase it by a good amount. Not too bad. And we can also now heal our wounds, which is actually pretty nice here. And we can also go into the black market and they do have some things available for us here too. So if we wanted to buy some stuff, then we could obviously do that. There's also a safe house here. So if we wanted to, we could actually build a bit of a base. Oh, look at this. Request nearby bandits to follow me. Oh, nice. We can also hide here a moment if we want to do that, which is super nice too. But we're not going to be doing any of that because we're just going to be heading on to Sargot once again. I should probably do a tournament here, to be honest, but uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I kind of want to get to clan tier two because getting to clan tier 2 is going to start getting people interested in maybe recruiting me as a vassal, and it might be kind of cool to at least level up our leadership somewhat. I mean, I obviously only have one focus point in it at the moment, which is pretty terrible, so I'm going to have to obviously do something about that, but oh well. Mm -mm. I don't know, maybe that's something for the future. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh no, your attempt was a complete failure! Okay. Uh, I hope that is not a... Um, not a bit not a bit of foreshadowing here, you know, the foreshadowing that I'm actually gonna fail at this tournament. Hopefully not. But I guess we'll see. Okay, yeah, this guy is obviously much better in terms of his skills in one handed. He is a Vlandian sharpshooter, of course. And my teammate was actually murdered, which is not exactly great. There we go. Just gonna try and stay out of range just enough. Just so that he is baited into attacking. Oh, it seems like I'm going to have to use the little rock here. Okay, yeah, this is... Oh, this is a bit... Uh, this is a bit dicey, isn't it? Oh, never mind. The Vlandian champion had no idea what was going on. And he lowered his defenses for a real quick second. And now, there we go. Wonderful. And that's the funny thing. I feel like there are these kinds of obstacles or uh, in environmental objects in every single tournament stage at least i think so and i just haven't noticed them before because i've just been fighting really straight up so for example the tree in the batanian arena and the rock over there in the vlandian arena and it feels to me like they really do provide you with a significant advantage in general you know if you can 
make smart use of it. Because obviously, as you saw at the end there, when I was fighting against that other guy, he actually was able to get onto the onto the rock. It was just a case of him making the move to do that. You know, if he actually went around in a proper way, then he was able to get on. And it wasn't a case of them just not being able to. They can do it. It's just a case of them being a bit, a bit silly about it. But um, yeah, that obviously makes all the difference in the world too. You know, creating separation. Because obviously you want to create as much separation as possible if you're outnumbered. You don't really want to have them on top of you just absolutely murdering you six ways from Sunday. So, you know, that kind of thing really does make a big difference. Same thing with the tree, really. But that's more to do with blocking your opponent's strikes. And for some reason... I haven't been able to kill this guy, even though I've actually been doing some pretty good damage to him. But yeah, he's uh, he's, he's doing some good, good work right there. Anyway, there we go. We were able to achieve victory. Oh, no. Okay, this is real bad. This is real bad. Can you see why this is real bad? Yes. Okay, this is absolutely terrible. Okay, yep, this is terrible. I'm actually going to be running. I'm actually going to run very, very quickly over to the rock here. Dwayne, help me. There we go. Yes. Oh, oh, no, see, see, look. It is not, it is not a failsafe. It is not a failsafe. It is very much a case of just being very, very careful here. I'm worried. Okay, there we go. At least we, we, we created separation. That's the point. We created separation. That is all we needed to do. As long as you can do that, then you're going to be able to divide and conquer relatively simply. And then you don't have to worry about it too much. It's not like we're getting on the other one over there, is it? You know, if we were getting on the other one, then I'd say, oh yeah, that's, you know, that, that's a little bit much. Because if I had a ranged weapon, for example, and I was going to, you know, stand on this. Actually, don't even know whether you can get up there. They might actually prevent you from going up there with an invisible wall or something like that. But, oh well. Whatever the case, we did actually get ourselves a wonderful mace, which could be kind of useful for taking some prisoners. Let's actually have a look. I'm currently using this. Let's see if this one is actually any good. No, it is actually worse. I would not have expected that in a million years because Knight's Fall, it kind of sounds cool, right? It sounds pretty pretty awesome, but apparently the Militia Pernach is actually better, which is kind of strange, but oh well, never mind. There we go. So we did actually end up achieving victory here. Uh, who, who do we actually have here? Whoa, this is a, a super powerful gang leader. Wow. Very powerful. Get oh, both of them are super powerful. Okay. Hmm. Do I actually want to do any any kind of encroaching on this area? The both both of them are looking super strong. So no matter who we end up helping, we're going to be getting a pretty significant ally. There's only one gang leader in this particular one. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that actually mean? Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, anyway, oh, actually, I wanted to mention one thing. You know how in a previous episode I was talking about how I would like to increase my companion limit? Technically, I can do that with Chaos's Tweaks, okay? I can actually do that with Chaos's Tweaks, but I'm now wondering whether I even want to do that, because if I do that, it is going to fundamentally change the balance of the game itself, because obviously I'm going to then have a significant amount of companions. I'm going to have these companions being really useful for wages they're going to give me a lot of money every single week so i'm not sure whether it's actually a good idea for me to do that or not so yeah, I, i'm in a bit of two minds about it anyway it seems like this guy we can actually earn relation with him and i think i will probably just earn relation with him i mean i don't see a reason why we shouldn't let's get some Let's get some relation with him for now. I want to prove my skills. Let's pick the pocket of some locals. Seven times might be a little bit difficult. Um, but we're going to go into the tavern. See if I can get seven. Okay. Oh, wow. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we're already done with, with this person. Uh, okay. Uh, there, there we go. Tavern maid. There we go. Oh, I, I'm, I'm kind of worried, actually, that we're not going to find enough people to be able to to rob them, to be honest, but no, it should be fine. Caught in the act. I'm drawing attention to myself. Okay, there we go. We did it. Whew. I was, uh, I was, I was sweating there for a second. I thought to myself, no, we're going to have some big, big problems, but no. Anyway, ah, she is actually a smith, so if you are looking for a smithing, smithing person, apparently the ill-starred is also a, uh, 
There's also a suffix that they have, a little title that they have. So that's kind of useful, I guess. Anyway, forced tribute, insurance scam, robbery, notable extortion, and all that stuff. We're gonna we're gonna go for the forced tribute, I think. And I don't think. I don't know whether I actually need assistance any further. I think I can probably achieve victory pretty easily by myself, but I'm I'm very much just wanting to prioritize the relation. The relation is pretty important for us here, so I'm basically just going to be doing that most of the time anyway. So let me see here. Can we actually... Where, where, where are the enemies? Oh, there they are. Hello. Yeah, as you can see, I can very, very easily eliminate them. No problem at all. I would have been able to deal with them. No issue at all. That would have been super, super simple. And then I wouldn't have had to split the money. Yeah, I wouldn't have had to split the money. But oh well, never mind. It's only 500 as you can see right there. And um, yeah, we're, we're increasing our relation even further. We could do the grand heist. Grand heist might be kind of cool. So let's do it. Because the grand heist is probably going to give us a pretty significant relation boost and then we'll probably be able to uh you know do the little alliance with this guy and then we're gonna have even more cash even more cash for us is gonna be good and otherwise let me see oh what, what, what's going on here all right uh do they have good armor yes they apparently do oh no no this guy is actually taking a little bit more damage to the head than the other one so that's nice at least uh, the other fellows have shields. Well, that's not particularly good, is it? No, that is that is pretty terrible. Okay. Yeah, we're... Oh, we're having some issues here, actually. Oh, hello. Okay, never mind, never mind. We've just got the numbers. That was it. We just had the numbers. That was all that was actually able to even save the day there. We were having some big problems, as you can see. We uh, actually ended up losing quite a few, uh, quite a few of our own people. But there you go. We can grab the money and we, then we can leave. Look at that. He's he's 37. He's at 37. That's fantastic. Okay, let's just wait here for a little bit of time. Maybe I'm going to be able to do a scam. I think a scam's only going to give me... Uh, I need to wait another day anyway for that. So I suppose I'll just do a real quick robbery. And we're going to have to do that at Charis, which is over here. All right, I'm going to have to make my way over there then. That's absolutely fine. As long as I don't get myself murdered in the meantime. I should probably try and increase my relation with all the bandit factions as well, by the way. So I should probably go and do that. And uh, I remember how to do this now. So we just go and meet our contact right here. There we go. Yeah, we're going to pay the 3,000 because I don't really want to face multiple people with just a wooden hammer in my hands. So who do we have? Ah, oh, this guy. Hello there. Okay, this is a Vlandian Vanguard, but should be easy. Look, look, look at how... Wow, this hammer is actually surprisingly effective. I mean, obviously, it does very little damage, but it's so incredibly fast and usable in close quarters combat. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's something that I want to consider using at some point. I don't know. The, the main reason why I'm not really using, um, using a short-reach weapon in street fights is because sometimes what you want to do is you want to have, like, a, a bit of distance between you and the opponent and you want to be able to slash or bash or whatever and you want to have some space between you and them because otherwise you're going to have to be right up close to them and then the other enemies that you're fighting because obviously you're more than likely going to be in a situation where it's a one versus many situation and they're just going to they're just going to gang up on you and they're going to be able to deal damage to you without you being able to deal damage to them so that's the reason why having a longer reach weapon might actually be the only thing that we want to go for Anyway, I'm going to go for the big one this time around. We're going to get a mule, iron arming sword, and a couple of pieces of gear. And actually got an upgrade. Wow, I actually got an upgrade for that. That's pretty nice. All right, yeah, look at that. We got an upgrade for a couple of people. Very, very good. And we have an upgrade for his horse as well. That's kind of nice too. And there we have it. All right, so we now have enough relation with this gang leader to be able to form a uh, form an alliance and look at that there's there's my upgrade bonus coming in too very nice and look at this my alley oh no that is terrible okay let's just do one more scam just to get the relation oh i didn't get any relation with this guy for doing the scam oh no okay uh okay i guess i'll just do my larceny heart. once again uh, yeah, five times. That should be really, really easy. Let's go back into the tavern. Hopefully we are able to do this again. Okay, here we go. There we go. Uh, oh, no. Okay, we're having some issues. K 
Okay. There we go. All right. Whew. Uh, I really don't want to get caught out there because you never know. I mean, there, there are no guards, but so I'm not entirely sure what can happen, but I don't really want to find out in that case. All right, so we can actually do the gang trial now, and let's do it. Let's go for throwing knives once again. Seems like it is going to be a pretty simple fight, as long as he's not as accurate as the other one that we fought. All right, let's see here. Yeah, it seems like not too accurate. Oh, I actually dealt damage to the gate. Look at that. We're not, we're, we're not besieging it, that's for sure. Oh, you know, you know those times where you're literally just missing by an inch and it's just like, ah, oh, that is the most frustrating thing ever. Nice headshots though. Nice, he's out of there. <laughs> I love the way that they just flop forward. That is absolutely hilarious. Anyway, there we go. Another nice little bit of renown for us as well. And we're just going to say relation is important. There we go. We're doing great here. Can you give me some connections? There we are. We can also buy a linen weavery from him if we want to. But I don't think we really need to do that. And he owns everything. Do bear that in mind. He owns everything. He has no competition whatsoever in this particular area. And so as a result, he will only become more powerful over time. Or at least I think so. At least I think that's how it works. Anyway, I do have some perk points with roguery to spend, so let's have a look here. 30% higher chance of enemy surrender, bandits, villagers, or caravans. It could be kind of useful. Or your crime rating decreases 20% faster. Hmm. That might actually be kind of good. I don't really care about the 30% the, uh, higher chance of enemy surrender, or do I? Do I care about that too much? I don't think I do. I think the crime rating decreasing 20% faster is probably more useful for me right now and i should probably go for some more throwing skill i should probably go for some leadership but obviously i'm not leveling that up right now so maybe it's not even necessary ah you can see here athletics is something that i actually do need to spec into but i'm actually going to go for some thrown weapon skill and then i'll go for endurance because that's actually going to make both of these increase by a small amount i need more i need more points I need more points. It's it's uh, it's a, an absolute travesty that we're not getting that many points. But, uh, well, can't really do much about it right now. Anyway, let's just take a quick look at this fellow. Yeah, he's doing absolutely fine. This fellow is, is, is still owning everything, annoyingly enough. But we can't really do much about that. Let's do another little scam here as well. And we are increasing our relation there. Can we do another gang trial, actually? Yeah, you know, we already have a partnership. There we go. Yeah, I, I would still like to be able to eliminate the enemy gang leaders. I think that would actually be a, a lot of fun to be able to do that. And, oh, look at that. One of my guys has actually gained a level. Fantastic. Look at this. He now has a focus point to spend. And I should probably spec it into roguery or into tactic. Actually, wait a minute. Not into tactics. Into roguery. Because he's the guy that is actually looking after the... Uh, he's the paymaster, basically. He's the paymaster. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. And let's have a look here. Recruitment costs are reduced. Ah, yeah, we'll just go for frugal, I suppose. Doesn't really matter either way. He's not going to be in any uh, any parties or anything like that. Okay, so yeah, let's just go back in here. And we can actually take back something. So someone has actually... Yeah, yeah. So Beneseth has actually come back and she is trying to do some stuff there, which is not particularly nice of her. But, you know, what can we do? Anyway, I should probably just continue increasing my smuggling operation. I think that sounds like a pretty decent idea. We have uh, my bandits right here as well, which is obviously going to increase my scheme percentage, which is always going to be nice. And otherwise, apart from that, I have two, two points to spend. So I guess the best thing for me to do is just to increase this. Or is it? That's the thing. I'm actually not entirely sure because, as you saw, my estimated income didn't really increase that much. So I'm actually wondering whether I should increase the other things. Hmm. Maybe it would be a good idea. I don't know. Comfort will increase the hangout max capacity. Yeah, that might actually make sense. Receive a, a, a morale boost when entering your base and plus one to hangout recruitment per 10 servants. Might actually be more useful to do that. Or logistics. Logistics increases your profit slightly and warehouse max capacity. Oh, okay. So in other words, this stuff and the hangout is going to be much more useful. Okay. Hmm. All right. So I actually, I actually understand a little bit more about this. Let's actually increase that. So while I am actually going to be hemorrhaging a little bit of cash right here, because obviously it's going to be costing me 3000, I think that gaining an additional one point every single week. So in other words, it's going to be two points total now every single week. I think that is actually going to make a huge difference, or at least I hope so. 
Otherwise, we can also go over here to the Hangout. This is something that I really want to do too. I actually want to make this much, much better. So I'm going to try to increase that from the Gambling Den, as you can see, plus one to Hangout Recruitment per 10 workers. So the more money that I can get, the better. So I'm actually going to try to dedicate myself to taking as many, just basically taking as many opportunities for cash that I can. As you can see, my criminal rating in Batania is actually really, really low right now. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay absolutely nothing in terms of corruption. So we're just going to be getting some profit back from the amount of weekly upgrades. And you know what I'm actually going to do? We're going to go for three. Actually, let's go for four points. Let's go for four points for one or two weeks. And that's going to increase my criminal rating to uh, two uh, 24, I believe. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely going to happen. Okay, hopefully we'll be able to do this. And there we go. Look at that. You dominate the streets of this town, owning the three areas. So basically, you can just click this, and then you can take it back automatically. So you don't actually have to uh, do anything with that. As you can see, Beneseth has 117 influence. And I'm actually surprised that the other gang leader isn't actually doing anything because she has uh, overwhelming power. She has 350 or something like that, which is pretty crazy. Anyway, uh, as you can see, uh, Moira is still not doing very well, um, unfortunately. Not not entirely sure why that is, but yeah, she's having some big problems. Can I... Uh, I can incite a rebellion. What, what does that actually do? I don't know what the incite rebellion thing does. Do you want to spend 20,000 to incite a rebellion? I actually don't know what that does, so I'm not going to be doing that right now, but I would like to try and take some things from Boss Gwynin, so... Let's go to the waterfront. I know, I know. It's me trying this again. Yes, it is me trying this again. Okay, so there's the waterfront. We're just going to zoom on over there. And then we're going to see if I can maybe do something. Okay. Uh, oh, there she is. Hello. Oh, okay. Uh, do you think I can actually assassinate her right now? My greetings to you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, can I... <laughs> can I actually... Oh, no. Are they going to attack me at the same time? No, they're not. Okay, that's interesting. Kind of weird. There we go. Ducking and weaving. Ducking and weaving. That's all I needed to do. And then we have achieved victory. Surprisingly enough, the gang leader was just standing there. Well, not standing, actually. Just sitting there, allowing me to murder all of her friends or all of her subordinates. And uh, now, now we're going to have to just take care of business. Oh yes, just take care of business. My party is now starving, unfortunately, so I will have to do something about that after this. But of course, I can't really do anything while I'm waiting at the town. So I will just go straight on in to the marketplace after this. And there are 16 enemies that we have to fight here. So let me see if I can get some thrown weapon skill. I think I did. Didn't I spec focus points in, in thrown weapons? I think I did. So it would be kind of nice to maybe get a little bit more of that. Nice. Can we get some headshots? There's a headshot. Okay, there we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I was really trying right there. I was really trying. Even with the rock, it's extremely difficult to do that when you have so many enemies to fight, especially the boss herself as well. I'm actually super surprised that we even died. I mean, uh, you know, we had a bunch of people right there, but apparently it just wasn't good enough. All right, well, <laughs> it happens, right? It happens, it happens. Can't really do much about that. Anyway, I do need to buy some food, so let me just very quickly just buy a little bit of that. 
and uh, technically I could do some smithing, but I basically have no resources whatsoever. So I think I'm probably going to end the episode off here because I do have a pretty significant amount of HP to regenerate, and I'm probably going to be attempting to make much more money in the next episode as well. So we're going to try possibly, maybe I'll... Um, I might try to mess around with Chaos's Tweaks a little bit, maybe just to make it somewhat balanced with the companion limit, because as it stands right now, we only have four. So I have obviously my Medic, and then I have two Roguery companions, and then I obviously have another another one in the form of Dareem. And we do have other options. There are other people that do have Roguery skill in the game, and I would love to be able to recruit them, but I just can't. So I'm thinking... What do you think? What's the maximum companion limit that we should have? About seven, maybe eight, maybe something like that. Because then we can at least have or indeed take over another two towns. And then at least we'll have that. And then maybe that's going to be a pretty good, pretty good place to stop. Not too sure. We'll see. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.